Oh yeah, look at that flip. Hello and welcome back to In the Kitchen with Matt. I am your host, Matt Taylor. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make chocolate crepes or crepe. Here in the United States, we say crepes. That's not the right pronunciation, but that's just how we say it here. <laughs> say it however you like, all right? So I had a request on how to make chocolate crepe or crepes. So here we go, that's what we're gonna do. Really easy to do, simple ingredients. If I can do it, you can do it. Let's get started. All right, if you wanna check out my original video on crepes, up there in the corner, there's a little I button. Click on that, you can find that. It's one of my most uh, popular videos. So this is pretty similar to that one. We're gonna start with a large bowl here. And we have two eggs. And then I'm gonna add in one cup of milk. This is 2% milk. You can use whole milk, which is, works really well, 1% milk. Or if you are lactose intolerant, go ahead and use some almond milk. All right, and I'm gonna add in my three tablespoons of white granulated sugar. If you want it more sweet, go ahead and add in a fourth uh, tablespoon. Now let's go ahead with a hand mixer. Some people will also do this in a blender. Use a hand mixer, or if you don't have a hand mixer, just use a whisk, and we'll mix this up. And now, what we wanna do, I don't always use a sifter for crepes, but when I make chocolate crepes, um, definitely use a sifter because cocoa powder tends to get a little lumpy on you. So we're gonna add our flour. This is three-fourths cups of flour. The normal crepes take a full cup of flour. All right, and then we'll add our one-fourth cup of cocoa powder and then about uh, a pinch of salt. This is like an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, somewhere around there. And let's go ahead and sift this all together. And this will ensure a nice, smooth crepe. And then just push down any of the lumpy lumps that you'll get from your unsweetened cocoa powder. Awesome. Also, before I forget, down below in the description, you'll find all these ingredients so you don't have to memorize them. All right, let's go ahead and mix this all. And then let's go ahead and scrape the sides with a spatula. I'm using my awesome silicone marble spatula. It's really neat, it looks like marble, but it's uh, made out of silicone. Love this spatula. Down below, you'll find a link to this spatula if you want to, if you like the look of it and you wanna pick one of these up. All right, so let's just scrape down those sides. All right, there we go. And you'll notice it's very runny batter, which is good, that's what we want. Just give it a good scrape one more time. Looking good. Nice, runny batter. All right, now our chocolate crepe batter is ready to go. Let's head on over to the stovetop. One thing I wanted to mention about the batter is some people will say to put it in the fridge and let it uh, rest for about an hour, and that's gonna allow the gluten to relax. I don't always do that, so it's not totally necessary. And now we have a, a skillet here. There's also specific crepe skillets that you can buy that are really cool. Or you can get like this crepe maker kit. I'll put links down below where you can find those. I just, this is just one of my favorite all purpose skillets. It's a, a nonstick skillet by Culinary Edge. The nonstick surface is a ceramic, so it's very safe. And it's got this awesome stainless steel handle, which means I can put this in the oven which is really cool. And it's also dishwasher safe. And it's got this cool diamond pattern and helps it with the non-sticking process. All right, let's go ahead and add just a little bit of butter. Or you can just spray it with cooking spray. All right, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some batter into a ladle and then take your skillet off the heat and tilt it and just put some batter in there, okay? And then you're going to turn it around a little bit so it fills up the bottom there. And we'll set this down. The first one is always kind of the worst. Same with like pancakes. It always seems like the very first one and waffles that the first one is the worst. So we're gonna go ahead and let this cook for about a minute on this side. 
And then what we want to see is we want to see all the edges and everything. It's going to kind of get dull and like drier. And that's how you know that it's um, getting cooked and about ready to go. All right. And then what we want to do is to flip it. Just come under here with a, a spatula. And sometimes I'll just grab the little corner a little bit, get underneath that, just flip it over. And then this side will take a little bit less time to cook, about 30 seconds. All right. Let's go ahead. See how nice and slippery it is already? I love this pan. Looking good. Okay. And then just go ahead and take it and put it on a plate. And we'll cook up the rest of these. Take some batter. Pan off the heat. Pour your batter in there. And then pour the, tilt the pan around so it fills up the bottom. And that's also one way to ensure like all of your crepes are the same size. Not that it really matters. All right, it's all nice and dry on top. Perfect. It's nice and loose. Go underneath it. I'll just pick it up a little bit like this. Oh yeah, look at that flip. Let this side cook for about 30 seconds. Nice, looking good. Looking good. Then just go ahead and finish off the rest of them. All right, now it's time to put these crepes together. Now there's a variety of way how you can fix them. So many different toppings and things that you can put inside of the crepes. I'm gonna show you a few of my favorites. Make sure to drop a comment down below and let me know what some of your favorite ways are to eat crepes. And let me know if you have tried or not tried chocolate crepes before. All right. All right, here we go. So we grab one of our chocolate crepes. Now there's a couple different ways that you can fold them. You can fold them into the triangles or you can uh, kind of roll them up. I usually do the rolling method. So one of my favorite ways is just to come in here with some uh, Cool Whip or whipped cream and then come in here with some homemade strawberry sauce or compote. Chocolate and strawberries just go really well together. Mm -hmm. Strawberries, love them. All right, cool. And then just take one side over and the other side, fold it over just like that. And then that one is ready to be topped off. And maybe I'll do just a little bit more strawberry sauce on the top. Like that. Also want to mention, if you like yours thinner, then what you can do is add a little bit more milk to your batter and then put less, like maybe only half full of your ladle when you pour the batter in your skillet. I forgot to mention that earlier. And it'll result in a thinner crepe. If you like it thicker, then just add um, kind of what I did. And then with this one, you could also try cream cheese or mascarpone. And that works really well. And then this one, I'm gonna do some bananas. Bananas and chocolate go really well together too. Great. Fold that over. And then again, this one, I'm gonna do some chocolate sauce. I mean, some strawberry sauce. <laughs> you could do chocolate sauce too if you want. And this one's gonna have bananas on top. So there you go, that's two of my favorite ways to eat chocolate crepes. All right, the chocolate crepes are done. It turned out fantastic. I'm actually gonna have these for dinner. Don't judge. <laughs> How many of you out there like to have breakfast foods for dinner? Drop a comment down below and let me know. If you'd like to watch the video on how to make that strawberry sauce, click over here for a thick fluffy pancake recipe. Click down there and subscribe in the corner. Until next time, I'm Matt Taylor with In the Kitchen with Matt. Take care. Oh yeah, time to dive into this. Mm -mm -mm. Mm.